Welcome back, AP Stats. In this lesson, I'm going to cover section 9.3, which is going to be tests about a population mean. And we just came off confidence intervals about a population mean last week, so you should see a lot of similarities here. So I know I'm not there today, so we're not going to be able to do this activity, but there are some parts that I want you to think about here. Um, key vocabulary, the name of this testing procedure is going to be a one-sample t-test. Uh, we're going to use the t-distribution, which we did last week. Paired data, we're going to look at something called a pair t-test for mu sub d. We'll get into that later in the lesson. So for this question, for many years, doctors have told people that normal body, body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Today, we'll try to find out if this is true. So we're going to have some class data. I'll give you in a minute. Do the data provide convincing evidence that the mean normal body temperature is different than the doctor's claim? All right, so what you can do right now is list out the parameter with this correct symbol and words, the hypotheses, and the significance level. So why don't you pause the video and work through that state step right now, please. So what you should have came up with here is me, me. Mu is the true mean body temperature for all high school students. The null is mu is equal to 98.6. The alternative mu is not equal to 98.6 because they said they, is there evidence that this is different than the doctor's claim? And the significance level we always generically use is this 5%. So I'm gonna give you some class data. The class average 98.237. The sample standard deviation, 0.822, and the sample size, 32. So I just want you to fill this out as I go through the rest of this. The plan, you'll notice I've highlighted assume conditions have been met. So conditions have been met. We're going to do a one sample t-test. The degrees of freedom, just like they were for the confidence interval, is your sample size minus one. So 31 degrees of freedom. On to the do step. To get our test statistic, we take that statistic minus the parameter divided by the standard error. So our sample mean minus our parameter, the claim, divided by our standard error. Remember, this is not called standard deviation because this is the sample standard deviation we're estimating divided by the square root of the sample size. So our test statistic with 31 degrees of freedom is negative 2.5 picture looks like this. I didn't put this other number in. I could have easily figured out what it is. It's the same distance above 98.6 that this is below. And you'll notice what I did to find my p-value. TCDF from negative infinity to the standardized score of negative 2.5 degrees of freedom 31. That'll give me this area under the curve. And I'm going to double that area to get the p-value because this is a two-tailed test. So the two-tailed test results in a p-value 0 0.018. Conclusion, as we've written the for a couple chapters now, because the p-value equals 0 0.018 is it less than alpha equals 0 0.05, we reject the null. There is convincing evidence that, and I didn't link this back up here, that the true mean body temperature for all high school students is different than the doctor's claim, or different than 98.6. More specifically, it looks like it's lower is what we're getting at here. Okay, so let's go through and summarize what's happening here in these next couple of pages. So on page two, we I start talking about what happened in chapter seven when we were using z-scores for the sampling distribution. We used um, the population mean, population standard deviation. Here we don't know that. We have a claim for the population mean, but we have no idea what the population standard deviation, our best estimate, is the sample standard deviation s sub x that's why we have to use the t distribution we've talked about this already it's shorter and wider than the normal distribution so it has more variability but as the sample size increases the shape of the t distribution approaches the shape of the normal distribution four step process we're going to continue to use for the state list the parameters symbol and words hypotheses and your significance level for the plan step, you're checking the random 10% and the normal or large sample condition, and then you have to name the procedure, including your degrees of freedom. For the do step, get your test statistic and p-value, and then conclude. Um, you can interpret your p-value. That's optional. I actually suggest that you don't. 
on the AP exam. If you want to do it when you're doing a quiz or a test as some extra practice, that's a good practice. Um, and then we got our three parts. Compare your p-value to your significance level, make a decision, and then your context as far as evidence for the alternative. So first learning objective is just going through those conditions. Uh, you're only going to have one group, so you can forget about random assignment here. It's just going to be a random sample. 10% you will need because we're not going to be looking at an experiment if we just have a one sample t-test. And then the normal large sample condition, just like we saw last week, your population has been told to you. The shape is approximately normal. The sample size is at least 30, which means the central limit theorem applies. Or neither are true, and you're going to have to create a box plot or a dot plot or something like that to look to see if there's any strong skewness or outliers. Test statistic, we kind of went through that. Um, to get the p-value, you're using TCDF. How to do it if it's a two-tailed test. I showed you that in that example. So what I'd like you to do is go through using your calculator, find the p-value here given the information that they've given you. Go ahead and do that right now. Come back and check out how I run through it. All right, I immediately recognize this is a two-tailed test. Sample size is 20, so there's going to be 19 degrees of freedom, and the test statistic is 1.76. So I'm going to go to TCDF, and I'm going to type in 1.76 to very large number, infinity degrees of freedom, 20 minus 1 is 19. And then I'm going to multiply this by 2 to get my p-value. So my p-value here is going to be 0 0.094, 0 0.094 is my p-value. Let me just double check that. That should be correct. Yep, 0 0.094. Okay. All right, what you're going to see on page four and moving forward is some of the information is going to have been filled out for you just for the sake of time. I want you to make sure you have time to work through this lesson and get practice doing the stuff that is newer. So just a couple of things I want to highlight. Anytime there's a paragraph, it talks about convincing evidence and there's no like part A, B, C, D. This is a significance test. Very rarely will it, will it actually come out and use the words do a significance test. But I'm telling you, this is a significance test. So if we take a look at this question, what I want you to do is work through the state step. After you read through this, um, pause the video, work through that, come back, check in, see how you did. So for the state step. Do we have convincing evidence the mean amount of active ingredient in Aspro tablets differs from 320? So mu would be the true mean amount of the active ingredient in the Aspro tablets. The null would be mu equals 320. The alternative, does it differ? Mu is not equal to 320. Alpha is 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Okay. Plan step, same thing. Pause the video, work through the plan step, come on back. So for the plan step, they already did random 10%. Normal large sample, 36 is our sample size, which is greater than or equal to 30. So the central limit theorem applies, which means the sampling distribution is going to be approximately normal. Conditions are met. We're going to do a one sample T test. T, we're not using the Z distribution. Be very careful here with degrees of freedom equal to 36 minus 1 or 35. At this point, pause the video, go on to the do step and the conclude step. So work through these two steps on your own, come back, check in on the do and conclude. So do step, I have summary statistics here. The sample mean was 319, sample standard deviation was 3, and I know my degrees of freedom are 35. So just going back up here, uh, sample mean 319, sample standard deviation is 3. Just taking those summary statistics. So T sub 35, T distribution with 35 degrees of freedom. This would be 321. I should have written that in. Your statistic minus your parameter from your null divided by your standard error, the sample standard deviation 3 divided by the square root of the sample size. This ends up with a test statistic of negative 2. Then I'm going to go TCDF from negative infinity to negative 2 with 35 degrees of freedom. And I'm going to take that area times 2, that area times 2 to get this p-value. So let me show you that. So I'm going TCDF, number 6, 
from a very large negative number to negative 2 with 35 degrees of freedom. And I'm multiplying this by 2 because it's a two-tailed test. And obviously, something I know immediately is wrong because I have an answer over 1, which is impossible for probability. And it looks like I had two negatives in there. So that's the problem. So I'm going to delete that. Let's go back here, times 2. Okay, so my p-value is about 0 0.053, 0 0.053. So because the p-value 0 0.053 is greater than alpha equals 0 0.05, we fail to reject the null. We do not have convincing evidence that the true mean amount of active ingredient in aspirin Aspiro tablets is different than 320 milligrams, or I just strip the context right out of the problem itself. Okay, make sure you're never using past tense because that refers to the sample as we've talked about before. So that's the end of this first part of the video. I'm going to pause it and make a new video for the next part.